Welcome everybody to the meeting of the Board of Trustees with Residents, which we originally have always had as an annual event, but we have missed the last two years. So we're going to try to make this one a stellar event for all of you, even though it's remote and via Zoom. Uh, certainly we all would rather be together in person, but barring that possibility, this is going to suit us for today. Maybe I should say welcome again. <laughs> uh, in any event, welcome to this meeting of the, uh, of the residents and the, and the board of Horizon House. We have a um, mostly a get acquainted type agenda and also some reports to residents about what we've been doing for the 20 to 20 year. And we're going to start by each of the trustees taking not more than a minute and a half to two minutes to tell you who we are. And I have the privilege of starting. I'm Ann Brand. I'm a resident at Horizon House. I've been here now coming on 13 years. I've been on the board for um, eight years and I'm currently the president of the board for this year and for next year. For personal information, I just wanna let you know, I grew up in a little town in California, the Ojai Valley. Um, when I was growing up, it was a very, very sleepy agricultural village. I even rode my horse to school and attended a two-room schoolhouse for the first six years. Spent a long time completing my education, a uh, bachelor's in psychology, a PhD in experimental psychology, and additional four years of postgraduate work at the Neuropsychiatric Institute at, and USC, including two years of clinical internship. I had a career in community mental health and addiction services, been CEO of three different nonprofit provider organizations that contracted with local government to deliver comprehensive mental health and addiction services. I worked for Los Angeles County Mental Health as the Mental Health Clinical District Chief for Region 5 of LA County, which included all of the San Fernando Valley, Santa Clarita and Antelope Valley. Mm -hmm. I finished my career in the position of administrator of the Office of Mental Health and Addiction Services for the state of Oregon. Always been a policy wonk, have served as a member and board officer of statewide trade associations in California, Washington State, and on the National Board of Community Behavioral Health Organizations. I've served as a member of two school boards, both in California. I am a licensed commercial pilot on inactive status now, having pursued my co commercial rating in order to qualify to fly as pilot in command in the all women's transcontinental air race, which you may know of as the Powder Puff Derby. Children and grandchildren live in Eugene, where I visit often to immerse myself in the next two generations. I remain active in policy, as a policy wonk and greatly enjoy how this community supports engagement. I'm deeply honored to serve on the board and I'm so fortunate that my background and enthusiasm led me to being elected to the board. I mean, I'm looking forward to this year and the next and my continuing residency here and thank you all for participating. Now I'm going to wear a slightly different hat. We have with us today at our meeting, people who have retired from the board in fact, six people who have retired from the board, three a year ago and three just recently as this calendar year began. But before I even do that, I have with me a gavel. And this gavel is for my predecessor as president of the board. It's for Tom Garland. Tom, with what the inscription on this gavel says, with grateful appreciation for your outstanding leadership as a member of the House, Horizon House Board of Trustees and your many years of service. The gavel itself says, for your dynamic leadership as president of the Horizon House Board of Trustees 2017 to 2019. Cheers. Thank you so much for your years of service. Thank Tom. you. Now I have, find my other piece of paper here. We have with us um, Madge Hislop. Now Madge was the president of the board 
I mean, president of the, of the Residence Council. And for the two years she served in that role, she was a valued trustee and served on our board. Those two years were 2018 and 19. I wanna tell you that Madge was totally committed to and successful in assuring the board never lost sight of considering the interests of the residents, no matter what was on the agenda. She did it with clarity, with consideration and vision. She was quick to point out the opportunities to query residents for their input and fostered among residents the importance of their participation in the small group meetings with senior staff. She took it upon herself to attend all of these, to be sure she knew the range of opinions and ideas brought to those discussions, which she could reflect to the board. Thank you, Madge, for your service and being a valued member of the board. And since you are the first retiring board member I'm talking about, let me show you that you will be receiving this, this last Crystal House inscribed with your name and it says, with grateful appreciation for your outstanding leadership as a member of the Horizon House Board of Trustees and the years of service. And thank you. And I'm not gonna show this for everybody, but everybody who's retiring from the board will receive one of these. In addition, you will have a gift certificate for a meal at a very lovely restaurant when it becomes possible to have <laughs> meals at very lovely restaurants. And you have you will have a, a ticket to the Fifth Avenue Theater when they start producing something to be seen at the Fifth Avenue Theater. And again, that will be true for all of our retiring trustees. And I'm not quite finished because I also get to talk about Jim Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. Now, Jim has been with us a long time and has been uh, <laughs> such a valued member. He was actually on the board for 11 years and has served on the finance committee for that entire tenure. He and his wife, Pat, became residents of Horizon House in 2018. But his professional experience as president of Wirehauser Asia Limited and as president and chairman of Quadrant Corporation have been invaluable on the board and as a member of the finance committee. The board has relied upon him and continues to rely upon him to spearhead its efforts to explore and guide its interest in real estate possibilities. Now, Jim was president of the board when we undertook a search for a new CEO following Bob Anderson's decision to retire. As we all know, a board selection of its CEO is one of the most important and sometimes perilous of its responsibilities. Jim's steady hand and the, and, and the team who worked with him did, again, as we all know, a stellar job in selecting Sarah McVeigh. Jim brings measured clarity, integrity, and analysis to every conversation and is a welcome collaborator. But he's not going far. He, he and his wife, Pat, are here, and his valuable contributions will continue to be called upon as he stays on the Finance Committee and offers substantive input to our ongoing development. Thank you, Jim. And you will have all those little gifts available to you either by mail, or you could stop by and pick them up. That Thank you. Now, as you all will be glad to notice, I get to turn this forum over to, who's next? Mike Meekham. Vice President of the Board. Thank you, Anne. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mike Meekum. Uh, as Anne noted, I'm Vice President of the Board of Trustees. I've been serving on the board for two years. Uh, by way of brief, brief background, I'm, a, I'm from Spokane, Washington originally. I'm a product of Spokane Public Schools. And I did my undergraduate work at the University of Washington, studying business and accounting and uh, I'm a recovering CPA. I uh, have had a career in uh, banking, finance, and then more recently technology and telecom and have worked for companies such as uh, Macaw, at t Wireless, Google, and YouTube. Uh, and currently I do advisory and board work for investors, startups, and nonprofits. Uh, uh, on the personal side, I've been married for 31 years to my wife, Solange, who originally hails from Uruguay. 
and uh, Spanish is the first language of our home. We have two sons, ages uh, almost 30 and 29, one in LA, working in private equity, and the youngest is uh, in his second year getting an MBA uh, at Vanderbilt in Nashville. Um, in terms of fun fact for me, uh, I love to snow ski. And uh, in 2017, I had the uh, absolute pleasure and joy of checking a box, uh, checking a, a box on my list, and I walked the Camino de Santiago mm. across northern Spain, 500 miles over 31 days. Uh, I am absolutely delighted to be part of the Horizon House community, and it's an absolute pleasure to serve you. Thank you so much. Um, I guess over to Susan. You're muted, Susan. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. What are we going to do without you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm. My name is Susan Duffy. I am been on the board for quite some time now. Um, I have a... I am a, um, I guess, based on what Mike said, I should say a recovering lawyer, but I am in fact a retired lawyer and I may never recover. Um, I <laughs> have, uh, I am the mother of three daughters and through them, the grandmother of four grandchildren. And I feel very, very fortunate about that. Um, uh, my family has been in Seattle for a number, uh, for several generations, a long time for Seattle. And in fact, my aunt, who Phyllis Lamphere, who lived at Horizon House for many years, and my mother, a um, hundred years ago or whatever, got were um, were celebrated as like the first babies of the new year in Seattle. So. So um, I have long ties to Seattle and Horizon Place has a, such a warm, a big place in my heart because both my grandmother and my, and my aunt lived here. Um, I was recruited onto the board by Ned Lang and I'd like to use the rest of my two minutes to talk a little bit about Ned who is, who has departed the board and who will be sorely missed. Um, I, I wanted, on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank Ned for his nine years of service on the Rise House board and for his roles on the finance and audit and governance committee. I would say as his successor on governance, I would say that, that I would characterize Ned as the eminence grease of Horizon House governance. Uh, he had chaired the committee for much of his tenure on the board and he did it in an amazingly wonderful way. Among his many contributions to governance, first, his emphasis on board recruitment, which really, um, during his tenure, really benefited from his lifetime of community involvement, which I witnessed as a colleague of his in the law practice, and the network of connections that he shared with Horizon House, including me. He fingered me, and I ended up on the board, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, during his tenure as chair of the governance committee, Ned developed a number of systems for involving all trustees in the board's work and for asking trustees to really be accountable for their contributions to the board through self-assessments and otherwise. Um, I would characterize him as the guru of the Horizon House organizational documents and one of his last acts before departing the, the board was to do a major update of the Horizon House articles and bylaws, which I would, I would say are just sh now are completely shiny and wonderful. I'm sure no one will ever want to change them again. Um, Ned, we are so grateful to you and I would ask that you all join me in giving Ned a big Zoom round of applause. Thank you, thank you. And, and Ned, I would just like to say that in addition to all of those other gifts, which you'll be getting, I have a bottle of Walla Walla wine for you. Ooh, wonderful. <laughs> so enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and now can we hear from David Okamoto? David is the secretary of the board this year and next. 
No, this year. We're in 2021. I keep forgetting that. There we go. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, again, my name is David Okimoto. I've been on the board for eight years, currently secretary. Um, I was born in Kent, and uh, but came to Seattle in the uh, in '68 uh, and got my education here at the University of Washington in psychology and social work. I uh, spent many years as a social worker running nonprofit agencies and uh, running the city's Department of Human Services, as well as uh, ending up a career at United Way, where I met uh, many folks who are actually associated with, uh, with Horizon House. Um, my main passion at this point is uh, several. Uh, having to do with uh, with golfing, skiing, camping, fishing. So I'm I'm blessed to be able to be active. Uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife Dina and I, have been married for 44 years, and we have three grown children. So that's uh, that's a little bit about me. I uh, I would like to take a few minutes uh, on my my time here to uh, honor an outgoing colleague of ours, uh, Julius Debro. Uh, and Julius has served admirably on the Horizon House Board for three full terms, totaling nine years. And during his tenure, he has dutifully served on the Finance Committee as well as the Community Relations Committee where he chaired the Subcommittee on Diversity. And uh, you, as you, as, as the board knows, uh, we, we're working on a policy on diversity as we speak. Throughout his tenure on the board, he has been a staunch advocate for increasing the diversity of Horizon House at both the resident and the employee level. He has not been shy in voicing his concerns on issues of race and justice. And for that matter, on anything related to what he believes are in the best interests of Horizon House. Julius, You've been a great resource to Horizon House, and you will be missed. Thank you. Turning now. Let's give a big hand. All right. Turning now to Bob George, who is our treasurer. Well, hello, everyone, and um, welcome to the new year. And I'm sure that everyone uh, as is true with me and my family is thankful that we can look in that old year in the rearview mirror and look forward to uh, better things as we move forward um, and get the vaccines for the COVID. Um, a few comments about myself. Uh, I've been associated with Horizon House now for six years. I've been on the finance committee for six years, four years on the board. Um, two years with the audit committee and um, two years as the finance committee chairman and one year as the audit committee chairman. I'm originally from the East Coast. In fact, uh, my forebearers uh, emigrated from Germany in the 1600s to the Catskill Mountains of New York. And my entire family um, and my wife's entire family for that matter still live in Northern New Jersey and Southern New York State. A few fun facts, uh, my wife and I met in high school. Um, I too grew up in a small town in New Jersey. I didn't ride a horse to school, however. <laughs> um, my wife and I met in high school. We were uh, Romeo and Juliet of our, high, our senior class and um, king and queen of our high school prom. Uh, <laughs> After high school, um, we each kind of, we were separated. Uh, we were still monogamous in a monogamous relationship, but we were in different locations for seven years. Um, I was in Europe for a period of time and uh, we were apart. We got married. Uh, however, after I finished grad school, we've been married for 41 years. We have two adult children and our adult daughter is married. We moved out to Seattle in uh, 1996, and uh, we thought that it was going to be a short-term assignment. 
Our kids were both very young at that point in time, however, and they grew up to be confirmed Northwesterners and uh, we are not leaving our children. So we are, we are confirmed Northwesterners. Um, with that, uh, I too, as a committee chairman, have to turn a page with a long time Horizon House member and contributor to the board, and that's Bob Klein. Um, now it's my turn, Klein. <laughs> um, many, if, if not all of you, uh, know Bob and Judy Klein and their deep, deep commitment to Horizon House. Uh, they both demonstrate that commitment uh, with significant active participation and involvement for the benefit of, of all of us. Um, I first met the Kleins when Bob joined Estraline Technologies Board of Directors many, many years ago when I was the CFO. And Bob soon became the chair of our audit committee. And this is where I first learned of his uh, extraordinarily sharp mind, quick thinking, and equally sharp wit. Uh, Bob often used uh, that technique as a way to diffuse challenging situations. And I personally benefited enormously from his guidance and tutelage. We stayed in touch and uh, communicated back and forth after he left Esterline's board and he invited me on to the finance committee for Horizon House six years ago. Now, Bob has served Horizon House and all of its residents for an extended time on the board of trustees and as a leader of the finance committee. Horizon House's strong financial condition and balance sheet are a testament to his leadership and guidance. The challenging times we find ourselves in today and the financial struggles experienced by many CCRCs are contrasted with Horizon House's strength and strong balance sheet. Um, Horizon House has benefited benefited from proactive resident involvement, as we all know, a committed management team and continuity and leadership on the board of trustees. And Bob, as you leave the board on behalf of all the trustees and the residents, I wanna thank you for our guidance and your leadership over the years. We'll miss your dry and quick wit, although I'm sure the residents will certainly benefit from that. Um, and your sharp one-liners. We appreciate your contributions and we'll all strive to build on the foundation that uh, you have left. Thank you, we'll miss you. Okay, um, let's turn now to our, one of our newest members on the board, Jan Corriston. Thank you, Ann. Jan Corriston, my husband is Bill, and we have lived in Horizon House only for 15 months now. Um, we had spent 39 years in the View Ridge area of Seattle, enjoying our home and converting our, or transforming our yard, both front and back, to a Japanese garden. And so that has gardening and particularly Japanese gardens has been a, um, a real passion of mine for many years. Well, since we started our, our uh, project. Um, we both grew up in Colorado Springs, but didn't know each other while we were going to school there. I did my undergraduate work at Denver University and came to Seattle to, for my graduate work in speech pathology. Uh, continued with that as my profession for 11 years, both here and in Connecticut, where we were for nine years. And then when we returned to Seattle, I uh, decided to go into public relations uh, at the Broadway Performance Hall. That led then directly to development. I didn't realize it was going to do that, but uh, certainly great 
experience in writing and dealing with the press and community relations um, in at, at, during my 22 years then in development, retiring from Children's Hospital in um, 2009. So I've had some retirement. Uh, Bill and I have been married 53 years now and have two grown children. Our 46 year old son lives with his wife and two children in, uh, in Connecticut in um, Virginia. And he is the head, or he is a dance professor as is in, at James Madison University and his wife is at uh, the high school there also teaching dance. Um, our daughter, 47 year old daughter lives in West Seattle with her partner and their nine year old uh, daughter. Uh, she is a great fun. So we have two teenagers and a nine-year-old granddaughter. Um, passions here at uh, Horizon House have been, <laughs> I'm particularly grateful to Brian in the wellness area for all of his uh, Zoom uh, classes during our pandemic. It has been a tremendous help. And uh, I'm on the art committee and the um, flower committee uh, have not been able to participate greatly, but we are thrilled to be living here. Uh, I'll, just for those 15 months, but I had visited for about 10 years before on a frequent basis, visiting my uh, sister and brother-in-law, Marianne and Bill Anderson, and then my other sister, Shirley Colas, when she moved here seven years ago. So uh, Horizon House is in my blood now. Thank you. Thanks, Jan. Next on our list, we have um, Tom Garland. I'm so pleased to see you, Tom. You want to introduce yourself, please? Well, it's nice to be here. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't want to be outdone. Well, this is, but first of all, this is my uh, third term on the board of Horizon House. Uh, I've enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, not wanting to be outdone by Anne, uh, I too went to a two-room country grade school, only I did it for eight years. And there were uh, only four kids in my grade for all eight of those years. So, uh, so there, Anne. <laughs> okay. Yep. That was uh, that was the Rex Hill Grade School in uh, Willamette Valley, the hills above Willamette Valley, which is now quite famous that area for for uh, its production of wine. Uh, in terms of my background, it's it's business. I started out my early career in accounting, went from there to IT or information technology, and then from there to operations, and finally I finished up my career as a, a CEO of a relatively small company. Uh, so I've done a little bit of everything in a variety of industries, and I've certainly enjoyed my uh, tenure at Horizon House. Uh, my wife and I have been happily married for 20 years. Uh, we have, between us, we have six kids and six about to become seven grandkids. So our grandkids are quite young uh, at this point. So uh, I think I've stayed within my minute and a half. <laughs> uh, so I'm happy to turn this over to whoever thinks. Next up is Peter Shapiro. Hi, I'm Peter Shapiro. Uh, I am serving my second year on the Horizon House Board of Trustees in my capacity as president of the Residence Council. So they didn't have any say about letting me in the door. They had to do it. <laughs> um, I came to Seattle in 1975 to begin practicing law. Uh, prior to that, I was in a, a theater production for about 10 years where I met my wife. We had lived a block apart in Manhattan. It's a large place and thousands of people there. I didn't meet her until we both took a job in Atlanta. She's a singer actress of 53 years until she passed about two years ago. Um, 
the, I was practicing law in a large firm, which in the last 10 years uh, moved to one of the high rises on the west side of Freeway Park. So I was like moving toward Horizon House. As a matter of fact, the first apartment that, that Jan and I had when we moved before we bought a house was right kitty corner at what's called Castle Crag. It's not operating now, but right across uh, Terry and uh, University. So again, uh, kind of zeroing in on, on the Horizon House living. Uh, I practiced law and had a, at the same time a pro bono career, uh, nonprofit organization, boards of directors and leadership positions in the arts, for example, uh, the uh, Seattle Symphony uh, Orchestra. That was during the uh, development of Benaroya Hall. That was a wonderful experience to be part of that. Uh, I also, and, and ever since, uh, have been serving on nonprofit boards in the areas of homelessness and low income housing. When I left the uh, law firm in 1999, stopped my practice there, stopped earning money, I continued uh, my pro bono career and into this very, very day. Um, so I'm delighted to, to be here. Um, and uh, I will be here for no another year on the board uh, as president. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Next up is um, Gary Southerton. <laughs> Hello everyone, I, uh, I'm Gary Smith and I'm the pastor of Broadview United Church of Christ in uh, Northwest Seattle. I've been the pastor there for five years. I've just been on the board for a year. Um, I'm the UCC representative because the uh, Horizon House was uh, founded by the United Church of Christ years ago. I'm a Seattle native um, and I have uh, I grew up on North 84th Street uh, near Green Lake, and now I live uh, on North 75th Street, uh, nine blocks away. So uh, um, I've come full circle. Uh, my background is um, I've done uh, graduate work at Columbia University and Catholic University. I have a background in international economics and also obviously theology. Uh, before coming to uh, Broadview Church, I was uh, at... Uh, um, Plymouth Church in downtown Seattle. Uh, I was the executive director of Plymouth Healing Communities, and that's how I got to know about um, the UCC uh, and also Horizon House. Uh, I was ordained in 1988 as a Catholic priest uh, and then transferred my ordination to the United Church of Christ uh, in 2015, no, actually 2005. Uh, and now I'm a UCC minister. I'm married uh, to my husband, uh, David Isla. We've been together for 15 years. And um, I wish I was retiring because we love Broadway shows and a nice dining, uh, but I'll be serving on the board for many years uh, to come in order to uh, be able to, I'll, I'll remind uh, board presidents of those gifts in the future. Um, I replace Kathy Turner uh, as the UCC representative, and Anne was going to just do, I didn't know Kathy, didn't know Kathy very well, and so Anne was just going to mention just a little bit about Kathy, because we want to say thank you to her. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Gary. I, I will say a few words about Kathy. <clears throat> Can people hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Kathy first joined the board in 2009, also an ordained minister of the United Church of Christ, she was nominated by the conference board of UCC as has been Gary. Um, she was on the board for 10 years and served during the tenure of three CEOs, although she left the board just as Mike was getting started. The board benefited hugely from her keen insights and intelligence, her judgment and compassion. Her primary committee assignment was to the philanthropy committee and she became its chair. She took on this responsibility when the need to raise funds for residents' assistance was critical. The philanthropy committee and philanthropy staff could not see how the annual Partners in Caring campaign would be able to meet this growing need. The endowment campaign began in earnest as a solution to this dilemma. As you know, it has been a phenomenal success. Throughout her tenure as committee chair, Kathy kept the committee engaged and participating fully in the efforts to reach the success, as well as supporting the annual Partners in Caring campaign and the Jim Grand Awards. She assured that her colleagues on the board were engaged and participated in the philanthropy programs in full. 
In Kathy's words, quote, I appreciated the opportunity to work with the philanthropy committee because philanthropy is a central component of the spirit of this community. It sustains and promotes the heart of compassion and generosity that residents find here. I was happy to support our talented philanthropy staff and help keep us focused on our core motivation and goals. The combined efforts of residents, staff, and board members produced phenomenal success. Thank you, Kathy, for your years of service. And now we move to our newest non-resident non member of the board, Alex Tibbetts. This is her first meeting with the board and with residents. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. It's so fun to be part of this community. I found during COVID, like connections like these are such a lifeline just to meet new people and see how everyone's, see how everyone's doing and check in regularly. And I'm loving even the ceremony of this. Um, you know, like what, what you can rely on, the patterns and practices you can, you can are predictable and, and, and what you can rely on. I live in Northeast Seattle, um, sort of uh, U District-ish Ravenna near Ravenna Boulevard. And I moved here in 99. So I'm the mother of two natives, although I can't call myself a, a native. Um, my husband uh, probably is the, one of the biggest cheerleaders of the Northwest, and he's just turned in a manuscript called Roadside Ecology of Washington and Oregon. So it's an extension of this idea. Some people might have heard of Roadside Geology series um, that got popular at one point. So it's kind of a line extension of that. So drive around and uh, see the views and do short walks from the roadside to learn, around, learn about the natural history and the trees and the rocks. Um, my daughter's 18. She just started at Berkeley um, and is a rower. So she um, did remote school in the fall, but they're supposed to start practicing this week, which it looks like they have. And I have a son who's 13 and um, doing online school and playing Waterview in Bellevue's kind of been his lifeline to a social life and some, uh, some exercise. Um, I, professionally, I um, had an early career in, in a more nonprofit service oriented roles. Um, Care International was one of them in the headquarters, as well as um, working in East Africa on refugee programs after the Rwandan genocide, which was interesting, but I uh, haven't gone back to it since then. I transitioned into business consulting and then into technology and have worked at Microsoft, Amazon, uh, and I'm at Google currently working on uh, YouTube. Google owns YouTube, and, uh, which is where I met Mike, Mike Meekum. Um, let's see, I, I'm lo loving this and really is an honor to, honor to get to be part of this group and uh, looking forward to meeting people in person and more people and more, more residents over time. Thanks, Alex. We're glad you're here. <laughs> Turning now to Jim Yerby. And Jim wasn't able to join uh, this portion of the meeting. Okay, thank you for telling me that. Um, how about Harold Zeitz? Are you there? He may have had to leave also. He. Sorry, you just, oh, I just, there, yeah. I just needed to unmute, sorry. I was oh, okay. suspicious of an alphabetical order thing. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Harold Zeitz. I, I grew up in Seattle um, and I've known of Horizon House for, for, for some time. Uh, Mike Ostrom uh, asked uh, me to uh, participate in the board and, and I, I, I was sure that I would, I would learn a lot and I, I might be able to add a little value. I have definitely learned a lot and it's been uh, a great experience and it's a, a tremendous uh, Organization. I, I have a, a a different view of the the uh, of Horizon House now because uh, two uh, two lifelong family friends, uh, Peggy Johnson and Jim and Mary Stroh, are are there, and then my parents, Stan and Nancy Zeitz, are there. I thought I was joining this to be able to to talk with them, but I guess uh, maybe they're on maybe they're on video, maybe not. Um, so it's been it's been great for me to kind of get a 360 view of of Horizon House, and I, I really. Hard for me to imagine a better a better uh, situation and circumstance, and uh, it's been a really strange and unusual year. And the 
to be able to uh, support the management team in all that they've done for the residents. And I, I get feedback from my parents about how that has been working. It's just been tremendous uh, for me to be able to, to see. Um, I'm CEO of Zipply Fiber. Uh, we acquired the four Northwest states of Frontier Communications and thought a pandemic would be a really good time to take over a company. Um, we've been essentially running it remotely since before we even acquired it. Uh, and it's been, been quite interesting. We're super excited about bringing fiber to the, the you know, many, of, many people who have just had you know, slow DSL service. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that. Um, I, I have been married for 36 years, but I might want to point out that I'm, I was married fairly young. I don't know if that, if that counts. Um, and uh, I, I have a, a picture of my uh, three adult kids right here behind the picture of my puppy, Zoe. Um, and uh, 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 a fun fact, I don't tell a lot of people this, but I, I still actually have four years of college sports eligibility left. <laughs> okay, Harold. <laughs> That's a nice way to conclude. <laughs> we are um, finished with the individual introductions to the residents of the trustees. Um, we're delighted to be able to have this opportunity. We're running a little behind our schedule. The What's remaining on the agenda is um, a brief report to the trustee or to the residents of what has been happening this year, this past year, on um, the, the committees of the board. And we are going to give you some highlights um, by the chairs of those committees. And we'd like to begin with uh, Bob George with the audit and finance committees. Bob, take it away. Well, hello again, everyone. Um, you know, I, I, I foretold a little bit in some of my comments earlier with respect to the strength of Horizon House financials and balance sheet. Um, the company, you know, the organization, as you are probably aware, is rated, um, our bonds are rated. Um, you'll be glad to know that during the pandemic, um, unlike many of our peers, uh, we maintained the highest bond rating that we can have uh, was reinforced. And uh, that was a very important point uh, for Mike and Christy, as well as the rest of the team. So that was an outstanding accomplishment. Um, the team reacted very, very quickly uh, early on when there was the PPP loans available and uh, Christy jumped through hoops, got that processed and we were the beneficiary of some government assistance early on in the year, as you're probably aware. Again, with the, you know, with the impact of the pandemic, um, we focused very closely on the results, managing our, our balance sheet accounts and the team did an outstanding job. Uh, so the, we go into uh, we go into 2021 in in very very fine shape. Uh, remain committed to watching all of our expenses uh, very closely. Occupancy levels, as you would expect, are are down somewhat from our targets and our goals, largely because of the inability to to have people coming through Horizon House. Um, however, we're still in, in pretty good shape in that regard. On the audit side, I'm also the chair of the audit committee, as I mentioned. Uh, we had a clean opinion again, uh, which is not a surprise for Horizon House. Uh, Christy and her team do an outstanding job of, uh, of accounting for all of the, the very significant challenging accounting entries for a CCRC, and they do it in a great way. Um, and uh, we're gearing up right now for, uh, for last year's audit, if you will, for the audit of fiscal 20. Um, I've got an interview with the uh, partner from our accounting firm next week uh, to talk about some of the points that we'll be looking at as we go forward. So as I mentioned in my comments earlier, uh, Horizon House's financials uh, foundation is very strong. Um, and it's our goal to maintain that. And the team, you know, within Horizon House, you can be very confident of the team 
and, and how they are looking out for everyone's best interest on the financial side. Back to you, Andrew. Thanks, Bob. Uh, next up is David Okamoto to talk about the Community Relations and Diversity Committee. Great, thanks, Ann. The purpose of the Community Relations Committee is to reach out to the broader community and to support efforts to develop relationships in diverse communities so that there is recognized presence of Horizon House in those communities. It is our belief that in so doing, we will increase the number of referrals to Horizon House from those communities and increase the overall resident diversity. Toward that end, we have historically made grants to agencies that prom promote and celebrate diversity, such as El Centro de la Raza, Bird Bar Place, Asian Counseling and Referral Service, the Seattle Indian Health Board, and many others. We also place emphasis on funding efforts that serve highly vulnerable elders, such as Downtown Emergency Services, Plymouth Housing, Mary's Place, and Catholic Community Services. We are especially pleased to support efforts that our residents are engaged in, like Simon's House, the Sewing Club, and the Friends of Sylvia Odoms. And that's my report. Thanks, David. Um, for our Governance Committee, it's Chair Susan Duffy. Thank you, Anne. Um, uh, first, I wanted to call out the members of the Governance Committee um, this year. They are Anne Brand, Neil Reynolds, Alex Tibbetts, uh, Jim Yerby, and Harold Zeitz. Um, 2020 was an unusual year for our committee, as it was for everyone. Um, we were never able to meet in person. Hopefully, that will change in 2021. But fortunately, um, Ned left things in such tip top shape that there wasn't a whole lot for us to do in any event. Um, we, our focus was really on the most important role of the governance committee, which is trustee recruitment and development. We assessed the board talent needs, recognizing that, that this board like others needs really diverse competencies. And that led us to uh, ultimately uh, uh, attracting and retaining our two highly qualified new members, Alex Tibbetts and Jan Coriston. Uh, and you've, you've heard from them and you will know that they have many, many talents, but among them, they bring to the board really needed experience in marketing, philanthropy and technology. The other, the other thing that we gave some thought to this year, well, another thing we gave thought to was board education, which, which comes within the, the governance committee's purview. And this year, board education was really focused through Mike Ostrom primarily. Uh, it was geared to increasing our understanding of the senior living industry in general and the trends that affect us as a way to assist us in the strategic planning process that we're going through. Looking ahead to 2021, we're gonna do all our routine chores. We won't need to update the articles and bylaws as I mentioned before. They are sacrosanct now that Ned has waved his magic wand over them. But we will be doing our other routine work, including <laughs> conducting our periodic um, board self-assessment. And I would say just as an overriding theme that we're gonna remain very sensitive to the governance implications of our developing strategic plan. Um, in that planning process, we have recognized that Horizon House's culture is a really a powerful strategic asset. And we wanna be sure that that culture informs um, inf as, it, and as it's reflected in the strategic plan really informs all our, all our upcoming governance work. Um, back to you, Anne. Thank you, Susan. And we have a report from Gary Southerton on the philanthropy committee. Thanks, Anne. Um, I am Brand, the chair of the Philanthropy Committee. I started on uh, January 1st. Uh, I uh, follow Margaret Rothschild, who is a resident of Horizon House, and she was the uh, philanthropy chair for this past year. Um, I have been uh, 
basically, I have a background in being and saying thank you for the past 30 years. So I think that's why I was asked to be on the philanthropy committee. Uh, and uh, the philanthropy committee and the work of philanthropy here at Horizon House is extremely strong. Uh, it's a very generous community uh, for the Re Residence Assistance Fund. It's also a, a community uh, that uh, works with planned giving, and we have uh, many people that belong to the, the Heritage Society. And so um, I still have training wheels on, if you will, um, with all of the different activities of that, uh, but I'm being led uh, with competent staff with uh, Ruth and Ford. Uh, we've met and talked, and we have a meeting in February. I'm happy to report um, that uh, in the same way that the, the parish that I pastor has actually done better financially in COVID than pre-COVID uh, because we have a wider reach uh, that the, um, the targets uh, for philanthropy uh, for 2020 were all uh, met and exceeded um, in, in really trying times. And so uh, the plan for this coming year is going to be very similar to what you saw in 2020. Uh, it will be changed up uh, as conditions warrant and uh, people can meet face-to-face. Uh, -face. I've only had one face-to-face -face meeting with the, um, with the development team at Horizon House, but I know that, and we've also done Zoom meetings. Uh, they're very, very competent people. Uh, and I'm just so appreciative to the uh, generosity and the leadership uh, that the residents at uh, Horizon House um, offer in terms of their philanthropic uh, generosity. Thanks, Gary. Um, <clears throat> I just wanna highlight some, um, a piece of what Gary mentioned and that was Margaret Rothschild's role this last year. Uh, the board found itself in an awkward position um, as Kathy Turner left the, uh, the board and retired from the board uh, as philanthropy chair, which is a job she held for a number of years. Um, we were not well positioned to put a trustee into that position and um, Margaret Rothschild was an inc incredibly cooperative about being willing to take that on as a resident and worked with the team. And as Gary said, the, the accomplishments of the year are pretty remarkable. And um, I just want to acknowledge that um, Margaret what, <laughs> took on something primarily because I, I asked her to and asked her to, to, to step up and boy, she did. And I'm very, very appreciative. Well, the whole community is very appreciative because the results, is, as Gary said, were, were quite remarkable. I'm going to very quickly um, tell you a bit about the Strategic Planning Committee, largely because it is a significant focus of the board and just want to bring you up to date. Um, we formed this committee back at the beginning of, of the 2020 year, thinking, of course, that it would be a normal year and we'd be able to meet as one normally does meet. Um, and obviously that all fell apart in a hurry. But I want to tell you who's on the committee. Uh, in addition to me, Mike Meekham, David Okamoto, Gary Southerton, and of course, Mike Ostrom, Lori Warfield Larson, and Christy Seymour are all on that committee. And we're being facilitated in our work by Ryan Frederick, who we've worked with before. And he's from the consulting firm, Smart Living 360. Uh, providing consultancy services that are specific to senior living, headquartered in Austin, Texas, um, and serving both for-profit and nonprofit communities. But he brings a wealth of experience about the industry, its current trends, how we got where we are as an industry, and it is a very skilled facilitator. You know, we haven't done a strategic plan, really, for about eight years. And it was essential that we get going on figuring out where we, where we needed to be headed and how we would know when we got there. Uh, we have a history in Horizon House of staying current, of, of assessing conditions, of trying to get a pulse on what's going on in our market, um, looking at opportunities, um, planning for whatever contingencies we, we, can, we can anticipate. But we like to do that ahead of time. 
Uh, instead of looking in the rearview mirror, we like to be where the next next place is going to happen. And it's it's challenging because so much is changing in our world. So we decided that was no excuse. We needed to get our feet wet, get into the process and do what we needed to do to get a firm grip on directions that we needed to take. Um, as Susan Duffy mentioned when she was talking about the governance committee, one of the things that is so important to us is that the committee, the strategic planning committee, having done a market analysis, taken a look at the competition, got a feeling for what the environment looked like, turned our sights inward and realized, as Susan said, that we have and we cherish the resident driven culture that is the, the, the core of what this community is. And that whatever we do on this committee, we need to preserve and protect that culture and make sure that it not only thrive, grows, but thrives and, and is as strong as we can possibly make it. We have met um, 12 times since we started in January. We probably have another two to three months to go before we're finished. Um, we will be fine tuning and clarifying our direction and then be in a better place to talk with residents about what our findings and recommendations are. We feel supported by this community and this effort. Um, and we want you to know that the only reason we're doing it is, is to enhance and secure the future of Horizon House. This actually concludes the formal part of this meeting. We have collapsed all of the farewells to trustees um, into our committee, our self-introductions and our committee reports. Um, <clears throat> we would like very much to know if there are any questions from residents. Beth, have we had any come in? I have not had any turned in to me. Is there anyone, can we, can we take a, a questions from, from people who are watching? Yes, we can. So, um, well, anyone who is on this uh, Zoom meeting can okay. ask questions. So if you just raise your hand or unmute yourself, you can ask a question. Now is your chance. <laughs> I know that having... Um, been a par participant as a resident in the community during Zoom meetings like at the fireside chats and, and residence councils. I know that we have not had a lot of spontaneous or even planned question and answers from, from audiences who listen to this kind of presentation or watch it. I know it's a heck of a lot of talking at you. We would love to be in an environment where it wasn't so much talking at you as it would be talking with you. We've done that in the past and hopefully we'll be doing that a year from now. But we so wanted to touch base with you and, and have those of you who are new to our community and don't know us or people who might have known us but have forgotten or haven't seen us in such a long time, it's hard to remember. Just an opportunity to see who we are, kind of what, what motivates us. Ah, there's a question. Good, hello, Mary Margaret. I would like to address my question to uh, David Akamoto. I, I realize that in asking this question, uh, I can foresee a good many reasons that the answer would be no, but it's a question that has been on my mind um, always. and. Uh, the question is, in this era when we are seriously thinking of addressing racial inequity, is there any way that we could implement recruiting people who have other than Northern European heritage by offering a different entry requirement of financially. And the reason for doing this is not that people who are of different races don't have the money, but it's not interesting to a lot of people to come to Horizon House where um, there are 
so relatively few uh, persons of diversity. That's a great question, uh, Mary Margaret, and uh, very timely, as a matter of fact. Uh, the Community Relations Committee just met yesterday, and that was one of the key uh, topics that we, 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 we took up. And so we will be addressing that very issue in our next meeting. So thank you. Great idea and great minds think alike. <laughs> And Mary Margaret, thanks for your service in, in the cause. <laughs> Thank you for all of you. Oh, my goodness, it's awesome to hear all of the talent and experience and education that you all have brought and donated. Many, many, many thanks. Anybody else out there? And uh, I'd like to just say, because I really didn't get a chance to say anything, um, that I've been honored to be on this board. Uh, I came on in, uh, I guess it was January of 2010. And uh, three weeks later, my wife had a major medical issue happen to her. And I called Bob Anderson and said, I'd be happy to resign. He said, take whatever time you need. And she's certainly recovered. And, and uh, I've just had a wonderful time on the board. It's, it's gonna be kind of uh, interesting not being on the board, but had I not been on the board, we would not be living there. So it's been a great run and, and uh, I wish you all well uh, into the future, especially since I'm now a resident. <laughs> well, you're in very good company, Jim. There are a lot of people who have made that decision, but I will say that um, I was on the board when we did the search for Sarah, and I was so impressed with how, how well you all and your team did that. I was not part of that process except as a final reviewer, but it was clearly a, an incredible process, and we are benefiting every single day from the decisions you helped us find and make with regard to who we are today at Horizon House. And that leadership, fortunately, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're still on the finance committee and, audit and whatever, because we'll take advantage of you. You know that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Madge? See, I am unmuted. I, I would like to say thank you for your gracious thank you. And I think the board underscores the importance of having a percentage of residents on the board. It is so unusual for CCRCs to do this. And very few residents understand the importance of the cooperation between the Residence Council nonprofit and the Horizon House Board of trustees nonprofit. Thank you very much. Thanks, Madge. And Ned, Ned Lang, uh, I uh, deeply appreciate all the fine words, but it does raise a serious question of the credibility of the board when they <laughs> make these statements, but uh, I, do, I do appreciate them. Thank Ned, you. We, <laughs> Ned, we talked at length about that before the meeting. Uh, to <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go with it, Ned. Thank you. <laughs> As a relic from the 1990s, I would like to say that things have grown all in the good direction. Oh, Anne, thank you for that. Any other comments that anyone would like to add?
as a member who is leading the board, I would like to really uh, give my appreciation to the administrative staff during this pandemic. pandemic. They have done a wonderful job. And I can't thank them uh, enough in terms of what they've done for the residents. It has been just tremendous to get the notes of getting vaccinated and keeping them in the place and not losing clients. So I have been, I would like to say thank you so very much. Thanks, Julius. It's been a team effort, and Lori, of course, was the leader of that team effort. So, Mike, you think we should gavel it down? I think so. Can I have a motion from the what from the board to I'll close move. the meeting? Anybody out there? I, Hello. I so move. Okay. Second. Hearing no objections, the meeting is adjourned. And thank you, everyone, for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Great. Thank you.